Comedian Mike Onson is known for his point of view stand-up comedy. He's now here with us in the studio this morning to talk to us about his special brand of comedy. Hi Mike, good morning. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Are you a morning person? No, absolutely not. <laughs> In fact, I, I might, I'm not even sure that I'm really here. I might okay. be dreaming or something. You too. So, okay, you're okay, here. Okay, yes. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> I might just wake up later on and, ah, napanaginipan ko lang pala si Angel ako. Nako. Happy naman. Nako, you know what? Uh, off cam earlier, we were talking. Yeah, and, right, um, right, right. I'm amazed that you remember all your shows, where it was held, who you were with, the kind of audience you had. When did you start as a, as a stand-up comedian? I started in... You know what? I don't remember. No. <laughs> I don't believe. No, wake I started, up, wake up. <laughs> I started in 2003, mm -hmm. uh, sometime in February, I believe, 2003. There you okay. Go. Um, why the liking to do stand up comedy? No, because I've always been a fan of stand up, this kind of stand up comedy, the Western style of the. The, I think they call this part of monologue style or point of view. I've always been a fan of it. And during that time, you, don't, you can't really find anyone doing it. Like, this was a time when puro mga films lang, like Rex Navarrete, but he wasn't really based there, so you can only see him on videos or if you have his albums. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that parang, uh, I can't find anybody, I can't find anybody doing it, so I might as well do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in, and in doing it uh, yourself, was this a full-time job or was this a hobby? Was this no, something it's on just, the side it's, lang? it's like an expensive hobby. You know how certain professionals like you have doctors who go diving mm -hmm. or you have for example newscasters who play golf right. so just imagine me as somebody who I have a day job and this is like my uh, this is like my not so expensive hobby stand-up mm -hmm. comedy it's like my mistress yeah. <laughs> sometimes I would cancel dates because I have a show uh, uh -huh. or I tell them sorry uh, I have to concentrate on my show tonight you can't talk to me now <laughs> not talk to a comedian. No? Parang it's so difficult. Parang you always want to engage in conversation exactly. with a, with a exactly. comedian, with, with someone who's very interesting and, and very engaging. How, how long have you been engaging all of us? <laughs> <laughs> how long has this been? Yeah, how I long? turned 11. Uh, yeah, this year, Feb of this year was my 11th year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, like I mentioned earlier, you remember everything. Yeah, because uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of obsessive compulsive, so... I remember details. I remember dialogue from movies. Like I might, I may not remember. Like I would even remember conversations with friends. Like if I if I'm talking to a high school friend, I'd talk about something that happened in the '90s, and they'd be like, "Why do you remember that?" Wow, you must have been a good student remembering everything. No. <laughs> Strangely, I was never really able to use this in school. <laughs> no, I think uh, uh, somebody explained it to me. I, I have good auditory recall. Mm -hmm. If I hear something, I remember it. Uh, mm -hmm. Like if I like this, I might remember. Maybe twenty years from now, I'd I bump can into interview you again. And okay. I'd say that was a nice pink blouse you were wearing in okay. two thousand fourteen of April. <laughs> That's a gift, huh? <laughs> That's a gift. Well, it, it helps to well, see. I I I talk a lot on I, <laughs> I talk a lot on stage. Uh -huh. I write my own jokes, and there I guess this is it helps me me in memorizing my stuff. Mm -hmm. So you write your own jokes. Yes. It helps you in memorizing. Point of view stand-up comedy. Uh, why this type of flavor for comedy for you? Well, uh, well, I'm. Well, I'd like to believe that I'm somebody who is quite opinionated. So I have. I always have some snappy answer to some stupid question or <laughs> stuff that annoy me. Instead of like arguing with people, I just talk about it on stage and make fun of it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt anyone. Like if I if I if I don't like the traffic, I'll joke about it. If I had a bad date, I'll joke about it. <laughs> if I have an annoying ex, you're in my you'll be in my joke <laughs> definitely. You're on the show. <laughs> I'll just change your name to mm -hmm. some generic name, either a Jenny or a Jill or... Yeah, if you watch me, all the girls in my jokes are, are always named Jenny. Okay. Because it's... Uh, no, What's her real name? No. no. It, 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 it depends. It's a year. <laughs> no, 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 I, no, no, I trust no, no. you because you, you remember everything. So, yeah, siguro for 
my next show, I'll use Angel. Maybe I'll Sige. turn you into... I want to watch that show. I will turn you into an ex. <laughs> Pwede ba? Pwede yun. Angel, Pwede. I, I can't have this right now. <laughs> But having having your audience enjoy your laughs, enjoy your jokes, does that happen all the time? Or have you ever offended anyone with the kind of humor that you have, considering it's wholesome, huh? I might have offended a few people. Maybe, hmm. you know, you, you can't please everybody. So there'll, be, there'll always be these overly sensitive people. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, this would be probably in maybe 2007, 2008, I was doing a joke about the three o'clock prayer. Okay. But I wasn't making fun of the three three o'clock prayer. I was making fun of the guy narrating it. Because mm -hmm. doesn't he sound like this? Something like, three o'clock in the afternoon is the hour when our Lord Jesus. <laughs> but that's how he sounds like. So I was making fun of that. Mm -hmm. Then after my set, some religious guy was like, Hey, I liked your show very much, but I didn't like the part when you were like making fun of the prayer. It's parang, dude, ah, sorry, parang it's offensive. And mm -hmm. I had to explain to him, oh, no, I wasn't making fun of the prayer. I was making fun of the guy reciting the prayer. These are two different things, blah, blah, blah. So, oh, okay, so mm -hmm. I guess he understood. And they, they get it, naman. they understand. He got it, it. naman. How's Hopefully. the Filipino audience when it comes to stand up comedy? Uh, they're kind of weird. You know what? I. I have an easier time performing for Americans. Mm -hmm. Like if I have Americans in the audience, they're like very, they're more forgiving. They, they, even, they don't even mind if they don't understand the punchline. Like if sometimes I do my setup in English and then the punchline will be in Tagalog. Yeah. I, they'll just wait for the other people to laugh and they'll laugh with them and then they approach me afterwards. Oh, you're such a cheater. You like gave us the setup in English and then, <laughs> ah, but it's still funny. But, Filipinos, parang, uh, in the States, they have like, if you see docus about stand-up, their audience could be very engaging to the point that they'll throw stuff at you. Right. Or Here in Aman, you know how Filipinos are, we're passive-aggressive, so sometimes you have to deal with people who are not paying attention. and It's all right if they're not listening, but sometimes they're like talking in front of you. Mm. And it's weird because it could be a show where everybody's laughing. Like if you have a hundred seater, everybody's laughing. And then there'll be these two people in one corner talking. And you can hear them talk. Pero kahit two people diba? lang, you parang, can hear them. It's parang kumbaga, no, ha, pwede sa Starbucks na kayo mag -usap. <laughs> <laughs> parang, Can you not do this at my show? <laughs> you speak of shows. You would uh, open for Rex Navarrete. Yeah, I, I have been opening for him since 2004. That would be... Uh, Either April or May 2004, I opened for him in a little bar in Intramuros called Sanctum. Mm -hmm. mm, and I've been opening for him ever since. Every time he's in town, he calls me up. Mm -hmm. But I'm like a hired assassin or something. <laughs> He'd email me, I'll be there mm -hmm. in June. You better be ready. So you know. open for him. Will he open for you? I no, understand I you have a gig. Yeah, well, I'm doing something this Tuesday, April 29, at Commune. Mm -hmm. That's HV de la Costa, corner Valero Street. Uh, it's going to be 9 p.m. sharp, mm -hmm. and you can, can I like plug the site where they can, oh, no, there you go. Yeah, it's there, uh, yeah. Just log on to www.bit.ly slash full throttle, and you can type your name, number, and book seats there. High tech na, high tech na yan. <laughs> high tech na, high tech then when we watch you in commune. April 29, April 29. thank you no, for you're coming welcome. over, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Thank you for turning me into a morning person ah, today. It's fun to be a morning yeah. person. Yeah, sometimes I actually soon. wake up just to watch daybreak. Oh, nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mike.